one of the best things that we can do as a society is to set up our future generations for success. And in today's world, technology is a key factor in how our children learn, adapt, and grow. So what does a 10-year-old see as important in the realm of technology? Let's find out together. Hello, tech friends, and thank you for tuning in to Emerging Technologies in Business, where we take a deep dive into different technologies that are impacting businesses today and in the very near future. I'm your host, Brock Reiney, and this podcast is brought to you by Kincannon XR. Let's talk tech. Hey, everyone. Welcome back for another episode. Today, we have an absolutely special guest. Um, Chloe, would you mind telling our listeners your name, what grade you're in really quickly for me? Sure. Um, I'm Chloe, and I'm in fourth grade, and I'm 10 years old. Oh, my gosh. Fourth grade probably went pretty quick this year, huh? Mm -hmm. It does that every year. I promise you it really does. Chloe, thanks for saying hello to our audience. First off, what are some of the technologies that you're using today in your personal life and in your school life? Um, I've In school, we use, like, Chromebooks for, like, homework and homework. And then... Um, I have um, a, an Oculus right here next okay. to me that I was like using earlier, and I use that pretty much every day. And okay. then, of course, I use my phone, I use TV, all that stuff. So you're kind of really into technology, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Are there any technologies that you find really engaging or really interest you more than other ones do? I think the VR headset really does that for me. It's a lot of fun, right? Is there anything specific that you play on the VR? Um, actually, I play this game called Superfly. It's still, like, it says App Lab on it. Don't really know what that means, but I, I'm still able to use it. And basically, it's um, um, a game where you can be different superheroes, technically. Like, you have Ooh. all their different powers. That's pretty neat. So I haven't seen that one yet. So I have a daughter, and she's your exact same age. She's in fourth grade. She's 10 years old. She is all about vacation and job simulator. Have you played either one of those? I finished both those games before. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm going to have to let her know about this latest one that you told me about. She'll be all about it, Chloe. So do you use the same technology in school as you do at home, or are they a little bit different? Um, I think they're pretty much the same. Yeah, sometimes there's a little bit, um, some you'll have at home, some you'll have at the school. So do you think that schools should adopt some sort of these VR headsets into teaching you how to learn at school? Yeah, because then if they put like slides on it or something, for example, then you could yeah. like see it right in front of you and they'll feel like you're actually there. And I think it would be easier for some kids because a lot of my classmates don't really know how to use a computer. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you think everyone would be able to use a VR headset or do you think some people might have trouble with it? I think some people would get motion sickness because right. my family actually has that when I let them do the VR. And so this new game that you were telling me that's in the App Lab, which just so you know, the App Lab is um, applications that are brand new to the Oculus and they haven't necessarily been fully approved yet but that means you kind of have a sneak peek into what they actually do. This new app that you were talking about, what's that game about? Um, it's, you get to explore a city. You can choose if there's bad guys. There's a free play and a story mode. And then okay. you can also choose if, there, if you want to have bad guys or not in the free play. And then basically you can explore a city. You can choose the season. It can even be upside down if you want it to be. And then, um, yeah. And then um, there are like 12 different powers, I think. And if you, um, you can edit them too. There's different options for those if you want. Oh, wow. And what was that called again? Superfly. Superfly. That sounds pretty neat. If I don't tell my youngest Lily about that, I'm probably going to be in trouble later, to be honest with you, Chloe. So you also mentioned your phone and a Chromebook. What, what type of technologies are you using on your phone right now? Um... I usually, so I only get one minute per day on the weekdays. So I really oh. only listen to music on weekdays, like Spotify, Pandora, all that stuff. I also FaceTime my friends a lot. Um, but then on the weekends, I play Roblox. I watch TikTok, all that stuff. That completely makes sense. I think um, everyone your age absolutely loves Roblox and TikTok. There's no doubt about it. My kids have even gotten me into it. I've played a whole bunch of different games on Roblox. How much fun is that? That a lot you of can fun. create anything that you want, right? 
It's pretty amazing. So have you have you done any have you seen AI at all? Have you uh, been expo- um, exposed to that in any aspect? Yes, I've used Chat GPT before, and it was oh. really cool. What'd you think about it? I think it was really cool. I think it's a pretty interesting concept to have robots doing stuff. Yeah. So do you think that in your lifetime moving forward, do you think that you're going to use something like chat GPT in school or even in your life down the line? Definitely. I think in high school it will help me write essays a lot. Yeah, for sure. But if we weren't writing essays, how else would you use it? Is there something that you think would make your life easier by utilizing artificial intelligence? Yeah, I think um, if we're like an actual robot, like right next to me, then I would ask him to clean my entire house because I, with my little legs, it's hard. Um, But then also, I think if um, it were ChatGPT, if I were like really bored one day, I would ask it, what should I do? What should I eat? What should I wear? I think that's a great idea, right? Eventually, we're going to have to have cleaning robots, don't you think, Chloe? Yeah, like, there's gonna, and they're going to have to have long legs, right? You have short legs. Mm-hmm. We want long legs on the robot that's going to clean everything. And it's the one that can go get the fans that are up above our heads as well, don't you think? Especially this light. Um, there's a light by the door in my house, and it's like 10 feet up or something. It's really oh my gosh. Up. So we definitely need a robot with extendable legs, maybe. Mm-hmm. For extendable get short arm, places. Yeah. yeah, get the really, really high places. Just really knock that stuff out with no issue. Yeah. Now, I know um, you've seen that your dad works in electric vehicles and autonomous cars. Have you had any thoughts about those so far? Um, I think an autonomous vehicle would be really cool. But my one question is, how would... like I understand how it would um, see things and like sense things, but... What if it malfunctions and people die from that? That's the real question that we all have to ask, right? So we love all these new technologies that are coming out. But the biggest thing is that we have to keep everybody safe, especially if it's something that's going to drive a car for us. With you graduating fourth grade, I'm sure, in a few short weeks, do you think you'll ever actually need to drive a car? Or do you think it will be done for you? I honestly think it will be done for me, but... I think it would be good if I also learned just in case. That's a very, very intelligent way to approach everything, Chloe. So even though things can be done for you, it's never a bad thing to know how to do it yourself just in case, right? And I know we've talked about a lot of different technologies here, Chloe. So we talked about AI, we talked about virtual reality, electric and automated vehicles, Do you see anything that would be a negative impact to society by having these types of technologies? I think my biggest um, threat or worry about AI is if there are robots, like there are many movies, shows and stuff about AI taking over the world. That's my fear. You know, and you're not. Far off, I think a lot of people are having that type of thought process as well. And I think um, there's something that's called regulation that we have to put into place so we keep those type of things safe for you and I and for your family when you grow older and you have your own family, right? We want to make sure that these machines work for us to help us, not necessarily hurt us in a bad way long term. Like that cleaning robot we were talking about earlier? Mm -hmm. It could attack us with a vacuum. Who knows? (laughs) Right? That's a long cord that's got to plug into the outlet every single time. Who knows what it could do with that cord, right? So do you think as you grow older, do you think more people will start using those technologies that we've been talking about, like AI and electric vehicles? Um, And if you think that they're going to, do you think they will benefit from them? Or do you think the world will be better or worse by having them in them? I think it would kind of be like a so-so kind of thing because, like we said, they could hurt us, but they could also Mm -hmm. help us. So I think it would be kind of like so-so. Like, I think it would be okay. I don't think it would, like, greatly impact, like, negatively, but I think it would also be pretty cool. I agree with you. I think, A, it would be really, really cool. And I think the benefits outweigh the negatives, right? Yes, some people will have to get used to it, um, but we all would love to never have to clean our ceiling fans ever again, Chloe. It would be the best thing of all time. Could you imagine waking up 
Your parents never have to make a, a lunch for you. They'll make your own bed. Yeah, oh you'll start the shower. The shower will be a perfect temperature every time that you get in. It'll be great if we think, continue to adopt those. I think if my mom didn't have to make me lunch, make me breakfast, make me dinner, her life would be a lot easier because she wakes up at five o'clock every morning just to make me fresh rice for my lunch every day. Oh, my gosh. Well, you can tell that your mother and father love you very much, though, Chloe. That's the great part about it, right? And that's the one thing that these types of technologies can't replace, you know? They can't replace someone who actually cares about you and loves you and wants to make sure that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful life. So I have a random question for you. If you could take a VR headset and you could create any experience, no limitations, what would it be? Um, so there's one game that I've always wanted, but no one has made it yet. It's where basically you're God and you can do anything with the world. You can make people in it. Actually, I found a game on the Oculus Rift and Rift S that's kind of similar to it, but not okay. quite what I really want. Um, it's called Tiny Town VR. Basically, okay. what it is, is you're basically God and you can rotate the world. You can add buildings, you can add cities, you can add people, you can move the people around, you can make scenarios. But the sad part is about that, you can never unpause the world to see what happens. Oh, interesting. Okay. You might want to check out, um, have you ever heard of the game called The Sims before? Yeah. So similar idea, but you know, the thing to remember is it sounds like you have a very clear idea of what you want this to be. And remember, the world is infinite. If that's a game that you want created that you think would have an audience, it's okay. Do it yourself. There's nothing to say that you can't, right, Chloe? Well, I'll tell you this, Chloe, you've been amazing to chat with. I do have one last question for you, though, okay? And it's for a bit of fun, and I know you didn't know it at the beginning, but I want to see if you know it now. If you could have any superpower inside of VR, so you get to be in God mode, what would that power be and why? But you can only have one. So you can fly, you can be super fast, you can be super strong, anything you want. What would it be? Um, I think for me, um, I know it's not really like a superpower, but have it's kind of like off topic, but have you ever watched the anime My Hero Academia? I haven't yet, but tell me about it. I'd love to learn more. So there's one, there's like two powers or three powers in there that I really want. One of them is called One for All. The main character, Midoriya, has that. And basically it makes you super strong, super fast like that. But then there's also Bakugos, which is like explosions. You can use it to like propel yourself into the air or you can hurt people with it. It's like explosions, but you might go deaf from that because yeah. I think I'll take the first one. If I have to go deaf, I think I'll choose the first option, personally. <laughs> I don't know about one you. more um, from Momo Yayorozu. She has yeah. the power of creation. So basically, she can create anything she wants, but she has to use the, lib the libids in her body. I think that sounds like the winner, though, right? You can create anything that you want. Because that seems pretty then, infinite. You also, you also have to have the exact, um, like, not recipe, but like the exact instructions on what you want, like the height, the materials, the data, basically. So think about that for your game, too. If long term, if you have to, if you get to be in the God mode, right? What, how nice would that be that you use something from an anime that you really love and put a restriction on what people would do in the game? Because they would then need to know the exact measurements, right? To recreate something. That could be fun. That could be something where you learn how to create something new in your world. I'm excited to see what you come up with there, Chloe. And remember that anything is completely possible if you put your mind to it and you think that there's going to be an audience for it. I really enjoyed speaking with you today. Did you have fun being on the podcast? I did. Thank you. Awesome. So I want to do one more thing before we send our uh, listeners home happy. And I always tell them the same thing every episode, okay? And I always tell them, I said, hey, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for my guest, Chloe, for being on our show. And Chloe, can we tell these folks that we're going to talk some more emerging tech next time? We're going to talk some more emerging tech next time.